Hi there, this is Dr. Bill White with the American Orthodontic Society, and uh, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, creating a TMJ problem and not understanding why. And uh, several years back here, not, not all that far, there were a lot of articles written trying to clear orthodontics and saying that orthodontics had absolutely nothing to do with the TMJ problem and that couldn't be any further from the truth. Uh, you can create a TMJ problem with orthodontics, you can create one with regular dentistry, you can create it with restorative dentistry, you can create it by just uh, being nervous and, and tension and uh, stress and all these things can be a you know, problem. So let me show you one way that orthodontics did create a TMJ problem, and it's simple once you understood, and I knew the chance I was taking, so when this young lady comes in with a joint problem, I knew exactly what was causing the joint problem to happen. So let's uh, get on with this. I'm going to have to touch this, I guess, and get a little drop flowing here. And you can see what I'm talking about better. Uh, so here is this young lady. Now she has a, a, a TM, uh, she has a class 3 problem with her teeth and her jaw is out in front, or the teeth are, the jaw itself is back behind. And when you look at it from the front or the side, you don't really recognize this problem. But then when you look at her teeth, you can immediately see the problem that she's got. Her jaw comes out in front of these teeth, and she can bring her jaw back to where the edge of these front teeth touch the edge of the other teeth, but at that point, of course, the space is in between here, and if you pull it in and bite on the ed edge of the teeth, there's nothing takes the force except these teeth out here and the condyle back here in the back of the mouth in the fossa, and it's just, the pressure is on the condyle and the anterior teeth, and that alone I mean, having to eat with your front teeth tends to make a problem if you've got weak joints and that will create a problem. And this uh, could be creating a problem here. So what we did, we put a, a little acrylic pad on here and opened the bite. Well, that in itself throws a lot of weight on the joints up here and you bite on this all the time and you have to eat on it. So we more or less weakened the joint or gave it a problem uh, just so immediately on doing that. Let me uh, erase that. I'm sorry that the crowd up. You can't already see what happened. All right, so we put a block on the upper anterior teeth. We bonded it back here. And you bite down on that and you got this space in between here. But the load is back here on the jaw joints up here. So if you bite down here and you bite down with 10 pounds of force, you will have about 25 pounds of force have to be back there because the muscle is right in front of this jaw joint and it pulls up harder here to cut through something out here in the front part of the mouth. And this is something that every dentist ought to know about. And, and this is so ridiculous not teaching general dentists or anybody that's going to work on the teeth what your work on the teeth you have to watch what you do to this jaw joint up here now you can get trauma you can get all sorts of stressful things or you can just do something to the teeth and make them fit wrong and push the condyle into this retrodiscal tissue and you will have a tmj problem and you can catch that. You ought to examine everybody you work on. Put your finger right in front of their ear and have them move and 
kind of jar out here. You can run your finger around the head of the condyle. You can take your finger and touch right in here and then move your jaw around. Have the patient open and close. If they open like sideways and, and you hear a pop, you know that the disc is off the condyle on that side. It's off in front and you open down here and it pops on again. And then when you close, it pops off again. You can't stop that pop unless you had to surgically go in here and bring that back. You might put somebody in a splint and not let them bring their jaw back and keep that disc in a certain position up here. And the splint takes the load off. In other words, the splint would fill this area up back here and you would bite in here. So this force would go up on the uh, this side of the, the face instead of being all back here. If you try to bite with your front teeth and you don't have anything in this gap right here, then there's nothing from here to the jaw joint up here and your muscles right out in front. So you have to bite several times greater back here to put that much force on the front teeth out here. So every dentist ought to understand that. Now a splint, the only the thing about a splint, it puts something in here for you to chew on and then you can bite up here in the front part of your mouth and your load is coming up through the bone structure where it normally would do if you bite teeth together it goes up to here and it takes it off of the jaw joint and we ought to understand that if you're going to practice dentistry or you're having a problem with it and you're having to eat with your front teeth out here or somebody loses their teeth back here and have to chew, chew with their front teeth they put the load here and it'll be back here over the jaw joints and you overload them and then if you're stressful that overloads them also so you can cause a TMJ problem with orthodontics, regular dentistry, restorative dentistry. You can do it with almost anything. You can also just extract in a tooth and hold in your mouth open and somebody reprise and just almost pulling your jaw off. They can mess with it too and it'll be sore for, for a few weeks, but it usually gets over that. All right, I hope you understand what we're talking about here exactly. And uh, this YouTube thing is so thankful. I, I am so grateful for it that we can show you right here on this. And then anybody anywhere in the world uh, that's open to the Internet can see it and know that that happens. Now, when I went to fix this young lady, I bonded a block across here and we were biting on that. Well, that causes pressure on the joint, but it didn't hurt while I was doing it and it was able to work it. And so we expanded the lower jaw. I mean, excuse me, we brought it back in and we expanded the upper jaw and we fix it where the teeth would meet instead of like that. And this is the way they're meeting here. Now we're going to take these teeth and go forward with them and go out over the lower teeth. And see, we started this in 4 of 91. And we take this and kind of reduce it. You, If you could get it smaller, now you can tilt the teeth back where these will move back a little bit or you can come in and do some stripping kind of like a wagon wheel in here and you can reduce these teeth and let them come back some and now we'll put the teeth together but you can see right here looking in from the back side of the teeth these are the upper teeth right here and these are the lower teeth, and the upper teeth are inside like this. And that brings the jaw forward. 
and that keeps it from hurting. But if we try to expand the upper teeth and take these teeth and go in a forward direction and then take these and come back in this direction and put them underneath there like it's supposed to be here and it's supposed to work, when we do that, we don't have good contacts on the side of this. Okay, so we go in and put this little block in here and I put an expanding arch wire in and I push these teeth forward and I brought these back some but not enough. And I fix the thing and put her in a retainer holding it there and let the teeth come together. Now here is the uh, thing where we bit down at this time we put the block down here and they would have her bite the upper teeth were coming over and we put a little retainer in here that holds this tooth back and now she's eating on that and now the teeth these teeth are on the other side but she comes back with a jaw joint problem in other words this bringing this out having the teeth bite on this and it forces the jaw backwards and that pushes the condyle into the fossa further and it pushes back and impinges on this retrodiscal tissue and this is the real vascular with lots of nerves in it and everything blood vessels it feeds the joint it does a tremendous amount of lubrication and, and, and carries off the waste product and you get it sore and inflamed and swollen up and you still keep using it and pressing on it and irritating it and it just hollers for help and other muscles go out and have pain in your neck and your headache and all kinds of, I've had people with uh, pains all around and people look for a problem here. If you touch the jaw joint up here and you, the person won't even let you touch it, you know your problem is right there at that point. And I caused a TMJ problem by moving these teeth out here and this, when she bit down, it pushed these teeth back. When she was biting out here, it pushed it forward and it gave trouble to it. So orthodontics or regular dentistry or stress, all these things can cause TMJ problems. So uh, we had to come in and may open up some space on these upper teeth. You'd have to fill that in or crown the tooth or come in and strip the lower anterior teeth and reduce the size of it and so you bring it back and now something that was hitting here and probably you make it smaller and it can come back and it doesn't hurt. So you advance the mandible and expand the upper so you can and the pain goes away. And if People don't understand that. I mean, you, you go to dental school and you stay for three or four years or whatever it is, and you go to orthodontic school and, you, and they don't tell them or show them that. And it, people write these ridiculous articles saying orthodontics has no effect on the joint. I mean, that, that is, uh, uh, that's not right. Anyway, I don't want to hack people off and everything, but we need to know the truth. And as far as I know, this is the truth. And if it isn't, write me back or call and uh, uh, send something. And, and I, if I'm all, am I wrong on it, I'll certainly change. If I'm not, we'll discuss it and put it back on there. So anyway, I'm... We'll see here. We changed that. We widened that out and reduced the little, the lower anterior, and we got rid of the calls. We corrected the midline a little bit and finished the case up, and it stopped hurting. And we put a retainer and hold the jaw at that point. So thanks for watching.
and I hope this gets home to people that have influence in what is taught to dental students all over this world or whatever it is. And if you're just an individual and you have pain in there, you can figure this out. Put, put your fingers right in front of your ear, just about somewhere right in there. And if you move your jaw joint around, you can feel the condyle right there. And if there's a sore spot there and you can't touch it, something is going wrong in here and you're going to have to move this jaw forward, which will bring the condyle out further and get it off of this retrodiscal tissue that is just around the ear area. And that's uh, the message in this <laughs> video. So I'll pass this on. I hope it uh, works out. So here's a little lady who's finally happy with this. Uh, you see the bottom jaw, the molars were out further than they ought to be. And we're going to have to reduce something here to let this jaw go back, I mean go forward uh, some out here. Now when it was going way out here, it was too far, but there was no pressure on the joint. And when we change it, there is pressure. So it, that's the way we get rid of it, get rid of the pressure. And we did that and reduced those teeth and brought it back. And she stopped having the pain. So these were just, we took transcranial x-rays and everything to make sure that where the condyle was. And this is the condyle right in here, and this is the fossa right there. And it was like that. It's dead. And this doesn't hurt. See, it's right there. I'm not fan anybody that bites and they close here and have to move their jaw forward to get their teeth together that has any problem with their jaw joint. But if you bite together and then you have to move your jaw backwards to get the teeth to fit in there, you can have a TMJ problem. And there we are, we finished it up, and went from that to that. We got the midline, and then we slid that over, opened that gap. And that's the way we solved this problem. Now here we're just correcting the midline, there was a a difference you had to kind of rotate the two jaws and you can do that and get the teeth lined up properly but it had stopped the hurting by increasing the size in these this area and reducing it down here in those teeth and you can also change the way the teeth lean and you can get space like that so here it is treated and they finished it and so far as I know the young lady never has come back with any other problem. We left, left her have a retainer here which keeps the lower teeth in this spot right here but also re we reduce the size and they fit up in there good. And so thanks for watching and I hope that you're able to Pass this on if you're wherever you are in the world and you learn how to do something, try to get a study group around you with other people who are interested in orthodontics and interested so that people can learn this stuff. And people should understand this if you're doing a mess with the teeth. So thank you for watching and I'm going to close up and I'll stop it. And I'm going to have to